Hi, welcome to Willow's Workshop. I'm Willow, and today we're going to take a look at Army Painter's Battlefield Spacing Set. Now, um, I have a miniature that I've been working on, um, and I need to put a base to it, and rather than creating my own basing material the way I usually do, I went over and picked up this, uh, this uh, basing set, and basically what this is, it gives you a little bit of a cross-section of some of the products that are offered um, by Army Painter to uh, build up your bases. This particular one includes razor wire. And then of course here on the back of the box they give you a brief step-by-step -step is how to do it. Put down the uh, the white glue, apply the basing material, give it a bit of a dry brush, add some static grass, add some snow, um, and then they give you examples of different miniatures with different uh, bases built up around them as well as how to twist up the razor wire. So let's take a look at what actually comes inside this box and yeah these are kind of smaller. Um, what these are quite simply is uh, samples I guess is a nice way to put it. It's like a little cross sampling of the various different products so I'm going to get all these out of the container here along with a nice big bottle of Battlefield basing glue um, there's the razor wire Okay, and then of course here you've got uh, the, uh, the marsh grass here I think that's what it is take a look on the package here and then you've got uh, some uh, literature. This one, of course, is the uh, brochure for the gaming tools, um, you know, which Army Painter Green stuff is spectacular. If you're not using that, even if you're a modeler, you need to buy that. It's great for gap filling. Um, very easy to work with. But putting all this aside, um, what we've got here, quite specifically, is uh, these are 25 milliliter pots and this particular one is field grass which is basically like static grass this one is rocks which looks like it's cork material actually um, open that without getting it all over the place here so I have nothing to catch it but yeah that does look like a bit of corking feels like cork too um, that's really neat. I like the size of that. That works real good with most of these scales we work with um, in Wargaming. Um, this one is... I guess this is just Brown Battlefield is what they're calling it. Um, and that looks a whole lot like just simple dirt. Um, and the last one of course is Snow. You probably figured that out by the color. <clears throat> and that's just uh, to give it the effect that there's snow on, a, on a, the ground. And then this is a swamp truffed, is what they're calling it. And if you can see that, hopefully the camera's picking it up, It's 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 got a sort of a deadish coloring to it, almost like a a fall, you know, the green is coming out, the brown is creeping in, kind of a feel to it. So, um, now the reason why I'm, I actually picked this up, oh yeah, the razor wire, sorry. Uh, razor wire, this is actually wire, surprisingly enough. Um, it's a very, very thin wire. i got to find out where the end of this is. And what they're suggesting is to create the razor wire effect is all you do is twist this around a pencil, and then you could attach it to, you know, snip off a bit of it, twist it around a pencil and attach it, and it'll look like there's um, razor wire on the ground, um, coiled up on the side of your, uh, the base of your miniature, alongside where he's standing, or she's standing, dependingly. And then, of course, the basing glue, um, let me see, this is 50 milliliters of basing glue, so... Um, what I'm proposing to do here, um, so this is this is a nice little set. For the price, it's not really bad because I paid more for much less. I want to say this came in at about $14 US 
for this material right here along with the big bottle of 50 milliliter bottle of glue which um, I paid just for um, this type of uh, this type of turf before I've paid uh, or tuft is what they call it I've paid uh, uh, five six dollars for very little of this uh, in the same way just to get some leaves from one of my project I paid from secret weapon I paid I want to say eight dollars for a very small bag of leaves <clears throat> excuse me so a lot of the times um, this stuff is is quite expensive and uh, the question is is whether or not this is going to work for what I want to use it for and what I really want to use it for is um, I'm looking to get into uh, World War II military gaming um, bolt action has come into my view and I'm toying with the idea of picking up a set uh, the starter set from uh, either Normandy or D-Day and uh, painting up those figures and uh, engaging a little tabletop combat with my son. Um, in order to do that, I wanted a faster way to be able to uh, uh, go ahead and get those miniatures not only painted, but to get them based decently so they actually look pretty good on a uh, battlefield. And in order to do that, I was looking for a quicker way than my usual coffee ground method or <clears throat> chopping up bits of cork and things like this. I think uh, you know investing in some of these materials would be worthwhile. I wanted to do this this way to actually see if the stuff you know what's good and what's bad, um, if all of it works, if some of it works, if none of it works. So I figured this was the best way of going about doing it. My subject for this is going to be built to build up this base. Now this base is a George base. It's a simple wooden base. This is a two inch base, and it's for a uh, Cromlick or pilot that I've just recently painted. Um, if you're following me on Instagram, uh, you know, Whale, uh, Whale's Workshop there on Instagram, you've seen pictures of this guy. He had a bit of damage to his hand. I was able to repair it with some uh, Army Painter Green stuff. And uh, I really like the way he came out. Let me see if I could zoom in a little on him without it getting too fuzzy. Yeah, there he is. So I really like the way he came out. This is all done with Army Painter paints and uh, their ink tones. So I was real happy. In fact, and I like these figures so much, I ordered another. He's on his way. This company comes from Poland. Let me see if I can find that package for you real quick. Um, this particular one, this is Cromlick, and I will put a link below the video for how to get a uh, how to get on their website. The, the figure here that you're seeing is that's their product number there and it's the orc flying ace now I don't use the this particular figure is not to be used for uh, gameplay I just painted it for the fun of painting it truth be told I went to Adepticon I learned a lot of a lot of new things taking some of the classes that were offered there and I wanted the opportunity to go ahead and try to practice and apply those so that's why you haven't seen a video from me for a while is I've actually been uh, practicing up and trying to learn um, you know what it was I was taught in these classes as well as the fact that I uh, I've also got some new software to edit video with so I'm trying to learn how to use that software so um, I can actually make now that I've got a better camera I can actually make better videos um, I'm just putting this up here because I thought, you know, maybe there's people uh, out there like me who are wondering, you know, exactly what you could do with this. Now, the reason for this base, I like a little bit bigger base on the, the miniatures that I'm actually collecting that I'm not uh, using in gameplay. Um, one, because it gives a little bit more, uh, tells a little bit more of the story of the miniature. You know, you, you get to put a little more detail in, a little more work in. And it makes it more appealing when people see it. Um, second is this larger size base keeps people people can pick it up by the base. You know if they want to get a closer look at it, you tell them just do me a favor, pick it up by the base, and this way they're they're less likely to hit or uh, touch the miniature itself. So um, that's my reasoning for doing that. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to get set up here, and we're going to go ahead and start uh, applying some of this material to this base and see exactly what we can come up with. So stay tuned. 
Okay, we're back, and the first thing I thought I'd like to show you is um, the bottle itself. The design on this is really nice, actually. Um, the way this works is this peels away and actually breaks off there. Now, you can pull it all the way off if you want to, but um, it allows you to leave it on. This way you can actually click that cap in place. I don't know if you heard that snap, but here you go. And that sounds like a nice, tight, snug uh, fit. The uh, the plastic here, you know, keeps it so you don't lose the tip of this. So I, I think that's a good system there. Good good design, like that a lot. Um, I'm going to attempt to cut this off and get some of this glue out. If you ever wonder um, uses for these cheap disposable razor knives, rather than buying an actual Exacto, this is it right here, kids. This is this is what you do with these. So there's your glue, right? So, now what I've got here is, this is just a lid, this is actually a Pringles lid, and I'm just going to put some of that glue down on there. It got a little messy here, so we want to wipe that off. I'll set that off to the side. And then the idea is here is what we want to do is just go ahead and uh, uh, apply that glue to the base. Now what I've done here is I've taken a shot glass with blue tack, apply the base to it this way I don't have to hold it and I can go right up to the edges of this with the glue the brush I'm using is actually a Taclon brush these are again these are really really cheap brushes um, I think they're less than a dollar even at an art store um, so I buy a bunch of these all the time for things just like this this way you don't ruin your good brushes um, nice thing about white glue it is water soluble so you know you can kinda rinse this brush through with a, a little bit of dish soap and it should be okay but we want to get enough glue on here where everything sticks but we didn't drown the, uh, the thing in glue let me see if we can get a little more out of this bottle and there you go that's that's the idea right there is we just want to get enough glue on here so that we can get that basing material to stick real nicely so and this is a large surface area compared to your normal size uh, bases of what's coming with the uh, gaming miniatures. So please do keep that in mind. So this is going to be a little bit different uh, build up here than what you're probably going to be used to at home. Okay, so now that we got glued down, hopefully we got enough. I'm using a white piece of paper here in order to catch the residue of what I go ahead to put on here. Let me get this in frame for you. And... What I'm going to do is just go ahead and sprinkle some of this on here, and then anything that falls off, well, that's going to be just fine because I'll be able to put it right back in as long as it stays on the paper. I used to use bowls and stuff like this. I found the paper is actually easier because you can kind of form it into a funnel and get it just to run right on there. And that's all I'm doing right here. Hopefully you can see that. Is all I'm doing is just kind of sprinkling it on like you would sprinkles on a donut. basically it right there. Get nice good coverage. I put enough glue down and that's it. And then we're just going to sit and let that dry. Now you're probably wondering why I haven't used bigger pieces. Well I'm going to go back and put those bigger pieces on because I want to see layer by layer how these things work up. Um, it does suggest to put some of those rocks in, and I probably could go ahead and do that right now, but I don't want to disturb this material. I'm just going to leave it go ahead and sit, um, and then I'll work, uh, I'll work on the rocks next. So we'll let that dry, and we'll be back when that dries up. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, we're back. I've given this a good amount of time to dry now. It's been about 30 minutes. And what I wanted to show you is how much loose material you're going to regain from what you just did. So that's a pretty good example of what's not going to stick to that glue. So sometimes if you do this, especially on a larger surface area like this, maybe you didn't put down enough glue, but it looks like the rest of this stuck really well. Um, this material applied really nicely. And it, of course this is still in the process of drying. But what I wanted to do was, I'm going to go back now and take a little bit of more of our glue, and I'm going to begin applying rocks. Um, 
to this material so that as this sets this will actually have some of the, the rocks uh, situated. Now what I want to do is I want to put some of that razor wire, some of the static grass, some of the uh, swamp tuft if that's what they want to call it um, here as well as centering the figure in the middle so that's my plan for how I want to lay all this out so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take some of this glue and apply it in places where I want to put down some of these rocks and you're going to have to put quite a bit because we're sticking material to material but you know that's already solidly sticking I can feel that underneath the brush the material that's there is, is, is pretty well stuck to this um, so what I'm looking to do here is just throw some rocks here hope I can open this without throwing it all over the room and then just taking a set of tweezers and grabbing what I can here and go ahead and start beginning to apply some of these rocks into these different areas like this and what you want to do is just kind of break up the pattern in which they appear. You don't want to put too many or too few. Um, if you've ever noticed when you're you're out and about in the, in the wild, um, you'll find uh, clumps of exposed rock and then grass and then clumps of exposed rock. So you don't want to just put all rock and no grass or grass and no rock. You kind of want to break it up. So it gives the impression of being real. Um, and again, what we're trying to do here, or what we're trying to avoid doing is what I just did, but um, I do want to make sure I do have enough glue down to keep this stuff stuck. And if you do something like this, it's fine because uh, remember the, the white glue is going to dry clear. Um, and you're also going to go back over and dry brush on this. So I want to put down a little bit more because I do want to have some kind of, uh, um, you know, a little diversity here. And again, this is a larger base, so I'm covering, uh, trying to cover more material there. It's almost worthwhile just to try to do it with your fingers, maybe, huh? Um, kind of poke it around with the, uh, the tweezers when I'm done here. The uh, now normally when I do basing, um, I tend to use uh, certain colors. Um, but what I'm going to do is go with what Army Painter suggested here. Uh, now I'm going to put that razor wire on this side here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit more of this rocking material here. Actually, you know what? Let's try it this way, just to see if there's a difference. Let me go ahead and put a little bit of glue right there. Um, let's see if I can get a little bit more of this material stuck down faster. And again, you may have wanted to do this uh, right from the jump um, rather than doing it after you put down the material. In fact, uh, you may have wanted to put the rock down before you put down the, uh, the, the, the material on the bottom here. Um, so again, like I said, we'll put a little bit of this glue right directly on there. See if I can't get a, a good amount of rock material there. And again, some of these will fall off, some of them won't. So you know you're not going to get a, a perfect design unless you, you know, you glue one down at a time with the tweezers and, and like this. I'm just trying to go for get as many stuck to this as I can because again, like I said, this is kind of a a larger base to be working with, and I do want to give it. Uh, enough points of interest where it doesn't just look like a big open flat surface and it's boring and nobody wants to look at it. Now here again I'm going to put down a little bit more of this glue here. 
see if I can't get just a little drop here in here as well just to get a little bit more attached a little more of the material attached there and again you can do it with the tweezers if you want you can do it without the tweezers if you want put in the end that's the idea what you don't want to do is what I just did which is get it on the tweezers because yeah, that's just no fun because then everything sticks to the tweezers and nothing sticks to the model right or to the base so that's looking pretty good right there That should give it a nice little shape there. We'll go ahead and let this dry and then we'll be back. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, while we're waiting for our white glue to dry here, I thought I would show you just how easy it is to recover this material. Um, we're just going to go ahead and open up this container. And just using this piece of paper, and this is why I prefer it to using a bowl, is, and of course, having a larger piece of paper is better obviously depending on the size of the project but you can simply uh, fold this like a funnel and just let it run off right back in nice and easy back into your container and there you go and all that material is now recovered so we didn't really lose any of the runoff we kept it all and it goes right back into the container for the next time Thank you.